In 1998, with the success of their Aliens and Predators toy line, Kenner decided to expand with an Aliens Hive Wars line exclusive to KB Toys. Sadly, uh, it didn't sell very well, so most of the line that they were going to expand was scrapped. And so we didn't get all the really cool figures, in my opinion, that were intended to be released for this line. What we did get was a Acid Alien, a Hive Warrior Alien, a bulked up version of Hicks with a ponytail, Integer 3, the Battle Android, the Night Recon Predator, and the Warrior Predator, also known as the Hive Warrior Predator or something like that. So I didn't buy any of these figures when they were initially released. I have acquired these later on throughout the years. And for the most part, I really do enjoy this line and it's a shame that we didn't get the expansions or the other characters. And we'll get into that a little bit later. But on the topic of the figures I do have, I'm just missing one of the Xenomorphs. I'm actually missing the Hive Warrior Xenomorph. I have the Acid Alien. They're actually, to what I can tell, since I don't own the other one, they're the exact same figure, just with a different paint job. And I like, for the most part, what they did with the Xenomorphs from this line. The sculpt is very detailed. Uh, the only gripe I guess I could have is they seem to be not nearly as intimidating or have the presence that some of the other Xenomorphs from Kenner actually bring to the table. And I think that's all a part of being kind of slender, kind of small, kind of gangly looking. Um, I don't really know. And maybe there's something about the design not having the, the tubular vents on the back like a lot of the Xenomorphs have that we see. So maybe that makes it look smaller and less intimidating. But all in all, I, I do like the Xenomorph figure. It's just, it's just kind of odd because as you'll see with some of these figures, especially the human or android characters, they beefed up the scale a little bit, but they actually reduced the size of the Xenomorphs, which was a bit odd. I really, really like what they did with the Predators figures. The Night Recon Predator, interestingly enough, there was a variant that wasn't released that came with some extra accessories uh, and a different color scheme, a different paint scheme. The version that was released was much more stripped down, but it did come with a combat knife that fits into Corporal Hicks's boot, the action figure for the Hive Wars, the Corporal Hicks figure. So maybe there's a backstory there. Maybe this Predator and Hicks have some history in some way. This is a really interesting figure. And the reason I say that is because the head on this figure almost appears to be like a Xenomorph set. It's got that elongated dome. And my guess is that they were going for some sort of Predalien crossbreed. That would be my guess. I, I don't really know. We have seen that in the comics and the films, so maybe that's what they were aiming for. But uh, I do like the direction they took with this, and it's an all unique sculpt to this line. You won't find this head sculpt on any of the other Predators that they released, so it's all unique to the Hive Wars line. The other Predator they released, the Hive Warrior Predator, and I do believe much the same as the Night Recon Predator, this one is unique to itself, and especially the head sculpt because it does have that moving mandible opening jaw. And so the paint job on this is great. I love that blue base with the light blue airbrush. And like I said, just looking at it and comparing it to my other Predator figures, I do believe a lot of these parts are original. They may have used some of the same sculpts and molds for pieces of it, maybe the arms, but from what I can tell, it's all unique, and especially the paint job, it's all unique to itself. So this is where it kind of gets interesting with the human and android characters. Let's take a look at Integer 3 first. Absolutely love this figure. I love the face on it. It's a very just nondescript, blank sort of face that you would think a battle android would probably have. Why waste a lot of time giving it a lot of detail and character, and it kind of reminds me of the battle androids uh, from Aliens Fire Team Elite. But I like how when you move the uh, targeting mechanism on his shoulder up and down, this face shield comes up. So it really reminds me of some things we've seen in the comics as far as battle androids. But uh, just a really cool idea, and I, I like the idea of an android that can stick up for itself with a pulse rifle or plasma gun or something like that. So I think that's a neat take, a different direction from the androids we've seen previously in the movies. Now let's talk about Hicks. 
Uh, so I love the direction they took with Hicks. I, I think it's a really cool idea. I mean, first off, he has the patch on his eye, so the acid damage he took at the end of Aliens, I think this carries over into this figure. I think that's really neat. Uh, Hicks is part of a hair metal band now, I guess. He's got some long hair tied back in a ponytail. I'm here for it. it you know, Hicks has adopted some new lifestyles. Uh, really cool. He's beefed up. He's got a bunch of armor on, which, uh, again, doesn't bother me. I, I think it's just doing something a bit different, more of a toyetic approach. I do like on his left arm, he has this face hugger sort of trophy on his armor. And I think that that's a really neat idea, just to show that he's a seasoned veteran fighting these bugs. And uh, he likes to show off you know, maybe a trophy of his or something like that. Or maybe that's the face hugger that nearly, nearly got to him. And he had it sort of built into his armor. I'm not quite sure. But my biggest complaint, I guess, about this figure would be the face sculpt. It's just subpar a little bit, in my opinion. It's just something about it seems like his face is kind of melting or it, I don't know. It, it's okay but it's probably the weakest part of the figure and it's unfortunate because all the rest of it I think is is actually really neat and I like the direction they took with the sort of beefed up uh, Corporal Hicks figure. Thanks to avp.fandom.com we're able to take a look at some of the unreleased figures. They've acquired pictures of the prototypes that were never released and this is a real shame because I think this is where some of the coolest figures for this line really live, are the figures that weren't released. So let's take a look at a couple of those. They had some really cool ideas for the Predators that they didn't release, some different variations. And the Heavy Infantry Predator is a really crazy concept. He looks like Goro or something from Mortal Kombat. He's got four arms, he's big, he's bulking, and just all unique, something very different that we've never seen before. And it's a real shame that we didn't get this Predator. They also had the idea for a scuba predator, which I think is awesome. Uh, anything incorporating, you know, the water, I think is neat. It's, again, something different we haven't seen. And on that same token, they also had an air attack predator. What's really interesting to look at with the air attack predator is that it looks like the predator was intended to be a female character which we never got a female Predator character in any of the lines. And I thought that would have been really cool. And the closest thing we got to a Machiko Noguchi figure by any stretch was something that was never released. But you can definitely tell by the armor that it was going to be a female version with some sort of glider or some sort of diving from the air sort of capabilities. Uh, and I think it's just a really cool idea. So all these Predators, unfortunately, never saw the light of day. And so maybe there's some room on down the line for me to attempt a customization of a few of these. Uh, maybe not. I don't know. That, that may be out of, my, out of my expertise level. But hey, it's worth a shot. But really cool ideas for Predators that sadly we, we never got. They also were going to do two different variations of the Xenomorph. The Dragonfly Xenomorph and the Egg Xenomorph or the Egg Alien. And both of these I think are neat. Hey, the more... Aliens figures and variations I can get I'm a happy person and so I'll never complain about having too many again the success of this line really sort of hindered any future releases but the dragonfly alien really cool idea another sort of flying xenomorph we did get the swarm alien which I think sort of adopts some ideas from this or maybe they took some ideas from that and we're going to expand on it not quite the same and the egg alien is just altogether crazy. And so I would love to see where they would go with it as far as a the storyline. There was also gonna be two additional Marines that were released. Arzor, which is a predator looking sort of Marine with big predator armor, a big sort of bulking character. But the one I wanna pay attention to and the one that I focused in on the most as of recently is Smash Mason an unreleased Colonial Marine from the Alien Hive Wars line. Based on the pictures that we have from avp.fandom.com, it was maybe going to have 
red armor. Now, as we know, prototype figures typically can be all one color or a mixture of colors, so we don't know exactly how this figure would have ended up, but we can speculate that maybe it was gonna don some red armor. So I really wanted to focus in on creating a figure for Smash Mason because of all the figures I felt like it was the most achievable for me. So when planning a custom I always start with what I have because I have so many figures and so many spare parts some other customs and things that I've done so I thought to myself let's start with what I have and it dawned on me that I had some figures from Kenner's G.I. Joe Extreme line that would work with the size and scale of the human and android figures from the Hive Wars line. It's a different scale. It's not exactly three and three quarter. It's a bit taller. It's, an, it's a strange scale, much like the G.I. Joe Extreme figures. So I had the Inferno figure, which gave me that nice body, that nice base with the red armor and it looking very close to what they had planned for Smash Mason. And upon looking at the rest of my figures from this line, it dawned on me that, well, Metalhead it's got that long blonde hair, which we are assuming that Smash Mason would have. Again, it's kind of speculation. Maybe he would have long brown hair, but Hicks already had brown hair, so my guess, my hunch is they would give him blonde hair. And so with that head for Metalhead and Inferno's body, I pretty much had everything that I needed to add to the Hive Wars line by making a Smash Mason custom figure. So... I do as you normally do. I threw Inferno into an Inferno of boiling water, uh, loosened up the head enough to pop it off, and did the same with Metalhead, but I found that Metalhead's design on how the head attaches to its body is different than Inferno's. And that's one of the things about doing customs is that you find different little design techniques that they used and incorporated into their figures by kind of reverse engineering them. So I had to come up with a solution in order to get the head onto Inferno's body. And I had a spare accessory from, I don't really know what it's from. I was able to pop the head on there and place it down into the body so it fit very well. And there you have it. The only other thing that I did was paint some of the gold armor and straps on his body silver just to pull away from all that gold that was on the figure. I just kind of felt like silver would work better. But I do think it works quite well. Um, it doesn't have the hair kind of pulled back into a, a low ponytail or whatever like we see in the prototype. But again, the beauty of doing customs is you can take your own liberties and do your own interpretation. And this figure wasn't even released, so I really have my own liberties to do whatever the hell I want. And the size and scale is, it's a bit shorter than the rest of the figures, but it's just bulky enough for it to really work. And so I got some extra guns that I had, threw them in there. Uh, you know, the pictures that we see of Smash Mason in the comics, he always seems to be dual wielding guns. And that's one thing that I did want to mention, I knew we'd circle back around to it, is that Dark Horse was going to release a comic book or maybe a series of comic books, or maybe a one-off of the Hive Wars. And so, again, avp.fandom.com have somehow got their hands on some of these unreleased sketches. And so we get a little bit more idea of who Smash Mason is, and he's a dual-wielding badass, a big, bulking marine. Other than that, we don't really know much about his backstory. So in my mind, I just sort of made up the story that Smash Mason and Dwayne Hicks go all the way back to Colonial Marine Boot Camp. That's where they first met, and their paths have taken them in different directions, but they finally have come back together to fight off the Predators and Xenomorphs. And, you know, maybe that's what was supposed to happen. Maybe that's... Who cares? It, this is my own interpretation of this, and that's what I love about this stuff. And so, you know, I've set up Smash Mason in various different scenes, uh, really kicking some Xenomorph and Predator ass taken names and I just really like how this simple little head swap and minor paint detail turned out. It's my own sort of take on a Smash Mason figure that unfortunately we did not get and it's a damn shame.
And naturally, I was not going to stop there. I have customized a lot of 112th scale Colonial Marines over the past few months, over the past year. And so I really wanted to make a 112th size scale Smash Mason and Corporal Hicks from the Hive Wars. So it really all came together relatively easy. I had purchased the Stardusk 112 scale figures from Big Bad Toy Store uh, not too long ago. They were on sale. I thought to myself, maybe I could use these for something on down the line, or even as is, I thought they were just neat figures. And the head sculpts on these figures initially aren't great. They're a bit lackluster, but the rest of the figures have great articulation. The armors really kick ass. And so it all came together really easy. I took the Cobra Dreadnought buzzer head from the G.I. Joe classified line. It snapped right on to the red armored Stardust figure. I gave it a white pulse rifle from Gridiron Studios and the other plasma looking rifle in its hands actually came with the Stardust figure. And as far as making a Hicks figure, I used a dusty G.I. Joe classified head, popped it on there and had an extra backwards cap with the communication device from Gridiron Studios. It fit on there perfectly. Of course, I've got plenty of pulse rifles hanging around and some extra G.I. Joe classified guns. So I was able to dual wield the Hicks figure and I even threw on the signature face hugger on its shoulder armor just for that added bit of detail. But I really like how these 112 scale Alien Hive Wars figures turned out as an inspiration from the Kenner line. They're just a whole hell of a lot of fun and easy customs in my opinion. If you're looking to do this, the formula's right there. And, uh, or I would love to know what your own interpretation would be like. And so a whole hell of a lot of fun. It's really neat to bring these figures to life uh, and not only a 112th scale, but just in general with Smash Mason in particular. We never got that figure, but I think he's one of the more interesting characters that we just don't know a whole lot, a whole lot about. This is nowhere near the end of my Kenner Aliens Customs. I've got some really cool stuff planned that I'm working on. It's just a matter of resourcing material, so I cannot wait to share all of that with you. And you know, let me know what you think of these customs. Let me know how you would maybe done it differently, uh, or if you plan on maybe tackling any customs yourselves. Or I'm up for the challenge. Is there a figure you would like to see me attempt? I'm definitely here for it. You know, we're celebrating the release of Alien Romulus. So for the month of August 2024, it's all alien content. And so I figured I'd start off with this, this fun little easy custom that I did on a very small and somewhat underrated line by Kenner. Uh, maybe not underrated at the time. Maybe it was rated exactly where it needed to be because it didn't sell very well, but I sure as hell do like it. To all my returning viewers, thank you so very much for joining in the conversation and commenting on the videos. I love talking about all this stuff, especially aliens in the alien universe. It's my favorite. And if you're new here and it's the first time you've ever stopped down at Two Day Rentals, I appreciate that so very much. If you've liked what you've seen, if you've enjoyed it, I ask one small favor, share it with a friend, like the video, hit subscribe. I love to talk about movies, movie merchandise, toys from my favorite films, cartoons, and television shows, video games, even some music from time to time. Uh, you know, if it falls in that wheelhouse, I'll probably end up doing a video on it. I'm very content heavy when it comes to Aliens and Predator. It's just what I love to do. So I can't thank each and every one of you enough. And until next time, it's like I always say at the end of my videos, let's be kind as we rewind and fast forward through time. Thank you so much for stopping by Two Day Rentals.